Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of The Awesome with Cody. As usual, I'm your host, Cody, and today we are continuing December's theme of non-traditional Christmas movies. So, for the folks who uh, are just tuning in for the first time this month, or you're playing this out of order, uh, I have picked five of what I consider non-traditional Christmas movies. That basically means they're a, they have to do with Christmas, but they're not about Christmas. Well, I mean, one of them definitely is the one I'm talking about today. Well, two of them actually are. But anyways, they take place during Christmas, and the events of the movie happen because of Christmas. How's that? Does that make more sense? Um, so today we're talking... Well, so last week I talked about the night before. Uh, today I'm talking about Krampus. Uh, next week I'll be talking about Gremlins. The week after that, Ernest Saves Christmas. And after that, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Um, and I will go into more of those, obviously, in the coming weeks. But today we're talking about a little movie from 2015 called... Krampus. Uh, Krampus is directed, co-written, uh, and produced by a gentleman named um, Michael Daughtry. I have talked about Michael Daughtry before on here uh, because I talked about um, Trick or Treat. Actually, I think this year, right? Talk about Chris, Trick or Treat this year? Doesn't matter. I don't know what I talked about. Anyhow, uh, Michael Daughtry has done a lot of things. Well, I mean a lot of things. He's done a handful of things. Um, uh, if you haven't seen Trick or Treat, it is his anthology movie that he did um, in 2012, technically. Oh, I'm sorry, no, 2007 was when it was made and it came out in 2000. Oh, I forget now. Hold on, hold on. Wait up. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, yeah. So it was made in 2007 and released in 2009. If that makes any any f- sense uh, to you? Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, that's not what we're talking about. So Michael Daughtry uh, is most known now for um, being the director and writer of Godzilla King of Monsters um, and the story and co-writer of the new upcoming movie Godzilla vs. Kong, which uh, will be debuting um, s- this coming year, 2021, in both theaters and on HBO Max. Uh, if you want to know more about that, uh, listen to last week's episode of uh, the Comes Naturally podcast when uh, the guys and I talk about it. Um, but yeah, um, originally supposed to be out this year, uh, but then um, b- delayed because of the pandemic and then later shifted to... Uh, next year, May of twenty first of two thousand twenty one, um, and it'll be uh, part of the uh, Warner Brothers slate of uh, theater and streaming releases uh, for the next year. Anyhow, Michael Daughtry uh, also wrote um, the uh, co wrote uh, X Men Two, uh, Urban Legends, Bloody Mary with Dan Harris is like really like early on. I just say I want to say early on, but like basically co-creator of a lot of stuff. He, he wrote a co-writer with a lot of stuff he wrote because he, he worked on uh, X Two with Dan Harris. He worked on um, Urban Legends, Bloody Mary, Superman Returns, uh, X Men Apocalypse, uh, all with Dan Harris and some other people, Simon Kinsberg, Brian Singer, things like that. Um, and he co-wrote uh, Krampus with uh, Todd Casey and Zach Shields, who also helped him. Uh, co-write a comic book uh, based on a Italian comic book uh, known, known as Krampus Shadow of the Saint Nicholas um, which has art by Fiona Staples so it's amazing art just like the Trick or Treat book did um, which he also co-wrote uh, a comic book uh, um, with that as well um, but yeah that's uh, that's Mike Daughtry Mike Daughtry is amazing you should uh, check him out I cannot wait to see what he does next because um, He's working on the Hellraiser television program, um, as well as a couple other things uh, that are happening as well. Um, so yeah, that's Mike Daughtry. So, starring in Krampus, um, you have a couple uh, notable people from different things. First up is Adam Scott. Adam Scott plays um, 
uh, Tom Engel. Uh, he is uh, Tom uh, Adam Scott is probably most notable from a couple different things, mainly from um, the television program Parks and Recs, which he was on for many a moons. He was also in a, sh- uh, a really good show called Party Down on Stars for a handful of years. Uh, he was in um, the movie Step Brothers. Uh, he was in the movie um, Hot Tub Time Machine 2. Um, a couple other things too. Um, a lot, I mean, he's done a lot of different things. Uh, but most notably, I think he'd be most known for um, being on Parks and Recs. Uh, which he was on for 98 episodes. I played Ben Wyatt. Um, yeah, so that's that. And then a bunch of other stuff. I mean, he's done a, a bunch, a bunch of different things. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's Adam Scott. Uh, Tony Collette plays his wife um, by the name of Sarah. Um, Tony Collette uh, has been in a lot of different things. She is most... Uh, most recently, I guess, really, she's known for a couple different uh, um, bigger pictures uh, in the last big couple of years. Knives Out, uh, Hereditary, uh, The Way Way Back, um, a couple other, I mean, bigger movies the last few years. Uh, but she's done a ton of stuff. Uh, I mean, all the way back, I mean, I talked about Tony Collette uh, when I talked about... Um, Ooh, when did I bring her up first? Well, did I talk about her at all? I don't remember if I did or not. But basically, she's been in a lot of different things. I mean, most notably, uh, like I said, in the last few years, um, she was in um, Hereditary a couple years ago now. Uh, it was in 2018. Um, 2013 was The Way Way Back. Uh which is a, a fantastic movie with a handful of amazing people in it. Um, uh, do, 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 Knives Out just last year, uh, which is really fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, she's a uh, Tony Collette's a pretty amazing. She's in a lot of really cool stuff, and that's uh, Tony Collette. Yeah, 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 there you go. Uh, next up, we have uh, David Kirshner. I believe is how you say his name. David Kirshner uh, is known for a lot of things. Uh, he's done a lot of, of a lot of movies. Like he was in Anchorman, he was in Talladega Nights, um, he was in Thank You for uh, Smoking, um, Semi Pro, The Good, The Goods, Live Hard, Sell Hard, um, and then he was in a movie called Extract. He was in um, Waiting. Like I said, uh, did I say Waiting? I think I think it's Waiting. Uh, she was, he was in Waiting. He was the manager of the restaurant. Um, but yeah, he's been in a ton of different things. He's uh, he was on Saturday Night Live for oh, like a year or something. Um, but he's been in like a ton of movies. Uh, some satire stuff, some not satire stuff. Um, yeah, but that's uh, David Kirshner. He's pretty uh, pretty awesome dude. Pretty funny. Uh, next up, we have. Um, Allison Tolman, as uh, who plays Linda, the um, sister of um, Sarah in this movie, um, she is most recognizable as Molly's. Um, I th- want to say it's Salverson from the first season of Fargo, um, which I believe she was a deputy in. Yeah, deputy Molly Solvers, um, Salverson. Um, she was also. Uh, I guess on the show Good Girls, uh, which is on NBC currently, I think. But uh, and then she's on um, Emergence, uh, which is on ABC, I think. But she's a regular on that one, I guess. Um, But she was in tv wise she was on episode or two episodes of drunk history um she was a voice in archer um buh, 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 prison break castle rock for two episodes last year or year before um movie wise um i just recently watched kill killing gunther um she played uh 
a character named Mia in that one's really funny. Um, obviously, she was in Krampus. Uh, she was in The Gift. If you remember that movie uh, with uh, um, Jason Bateman and Re- uh, Rebecca Hall um, from 2015, right? Yeah, 2015. Um, the Sisters Brothers, uh, which is a uh, um, Western crime drama movie uh, with Joaquin Phoenix um, and John C. Riley. I think we're in that one. I think so. Um, but yeah, she's been in a bunch of random things all over the place. Uh, but most famously, she's from the first season of Fargo, um, which is the only season I've watched of Fargo, and it's really good, so you shall watch that. Um, next up is Conchita Farrell. Uh, Conchita plays uh, Aunt Dorothy in this particular movie. Conchita is uh, forever going to be known to me as two main things. She's been in a ton of stuff ton of stuff uh but she'll always be uh known to me as two roles uh one is berta from two and a half men and the other one is going to be um oh what is her character's name from mr deeds uh because she does a wrestling match fight with uh, a writer um in that particular movie um where are you at mr deeds uh, she's been in a lot of stuff. I mean, she's been um, all over the map. I mean, TV-wise, she's been on pretty much every TV program you can ever imagine. Jan. She played Jan. Jan in Mr. Deeds. That's what it was. Um, she was, uh, I mean, TV. let's just see, TVs. So, uh, Ah, Real Monsters, uh, Teen Angel for two seasons, I think, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, two guys and a girl, touched by an angel, Jag, friends, um, the wild thornberries, uh, a Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. Uh, she was on ER, uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I mean, she's been, she's done so many different things throughout her career. Um, but uh, most people recognize her from uh, Two and a Half Men. I always remember remember from um, Mr. Deeds um, because it's just a hilarious role. But, I mean, she's been in tons of movies uh, with tons of different people from all over. And she's uh, unfortunately just recently passed away uh, at the age of 77 in October of this year, uh, 2020. Um, Unfortunately, she was uh, fantastic uh, in everything I ever saw her in. Um, Yeah, so that's Conchita Farrell. Next up we have, uh, I would guess the main star, I mean, star, I guess you could say, or, or not really star, because it's, it's a fucking, a lot of people, people listen, but he's the main character, uh, plays uh, Max, his name is MJ Anthony, um, he, for me, he's, he basically is always going to pop up as uh, being uh, Percy uh, in the movie Chef with uh, John Favreau, he plays his son, um, and then obviously I saw him in this one, which I uh, loved him in. Uh, or love Krampus. Um, he was also in the Bad Moms movies, which I never watched. Um, and then he was in a Keanu Reeves movie called Replicas, uh, which y'all should see. And one day I'll actually talk about it on here, I think, because I actually dig that movie a lot. Um, one of those fucked up uh, sci-fi movies. And then uh, TV-wise, he was on The Mentalist, Grey's Anatomy, uh, currently on a show called Council of Dads, um, which airs on NBC... Yeah, NBC. Um, oh, it's canceled. Never mind. <laughs> not currently. Not anymore. It's canceled this year. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's MJ Anthony. And last but not least is Stefania Lavia Owen, um, who uh, I don't. I thought I knew from a lot of different things, but really, uh, the lovely bones. Um, was one of them obviously Krampus was the other one um and that's about it that's all the movies I know her from I thought I knew her from something else but I did not um that's uh, that's who that is um uh yeah so Krampus for the folks who don't know um is a Christmas comedy horror uh very light on the comedy that's why I said it last I think when I said it last week is it is a. It's not. It's just a straight up horror, and it actually could have been way more gory. But they kind of, kind of toned it down. This is more violent than than gory. It's actually not gory at all. Uh, there's only really one 
one scene with a lot of blood. Um, it's not even a lot of blood. It's just visible blood. Um, but it's, uh, it, it's basically about this family uh, who is dysfunctional coming together on Christmas. Um, and Max uh, decides that he wants to write a letter to Santa because, yes, he still believes in Santa. Um, and he... Uh, he, in the in the note, he basically doesn't ask for anything for himself. He asks for his parents to fall in love again, for his sister to be happy, and his uh, uncle, aunt, and cousins to um, not have to be in hard times all the time. Um, and when his uh, his cousins make fun of him, he gets upset, ends up ripping up the letter. And then it flies off into the weather and uh, it unleashes Krampus upon his town, which is super fucked up because it wasn't just him that died. A DHL guy died. I'm pretty sure all the families in the houses around them died because it did not look good for anybody. But Krampus, who is a, a, a folklore character from a, um, a Bavarian, I think, uh, uh, oh, Austro Bavarian folklore. Um, who is the anti Santa Claus? Basically, like the good and evil version. Uh, so Santa Claus is obviously good. Uh, he is the naughty one. Um, I don't know the whole tale, but I know like, basically if you're naughty or you don't believe, he comes for you. Whatever. Um, they use that as the myth in this, and that's what he does. He comes after the people who don't believe, and he um, sets about this blizzard on this small town or the section of town, I guess. Power goes out. They're uh, going through. Uh, the daughter leaves to go to her boyfriend's house to see what's going on there because he's not answering back. Uh, she ends up getting killed by uh, um, a uh, a Jack in a Box, I believe is that one as well, um, underneath a GH- DHL van with a frozen driver in it. Um, and then uh, throughout the rest of the movie, uh, the rest of the family is uh, uh, terrorized and murdered by various toys and creatures uh, set upon them by Krampus. Uh, the grandmother gets uh, taken by Krampus, well, a sack full of demon toys by Krampus directly because she was once um, left alive uh, by him to warn others and um, she didn't do her job right and so he came for her, took her and then gave Max the chance and uh, you'll have to watch the movie see what happens from there. Um, but yeah, it's a really fun movie. Uh, it's f- really good if you have a nice sound system because there's really good ni- audio design in this and really spooky stuff and some really could some pretty awesome creature creations from Weta. Um, and just the all around uh, uh fun movie. And I uh, I kind of wish it was more. Uh, well, I mean, I guess in my mind, more gory. Um. There's a couple scenes that could have done with some blood splatter and other stuff, but for the most part, you don't need it. But, I mean, for me, it would have been funner that way. Um, uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's that's Krampus, everybody. Uh, pretty awesome Christmas horror movie. Uh, y'all should check it out. Um, I don't know if it's on any streaming services. I own it on iTunes, so we watched it on that one. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Check it out. It's fun. It's awesome. Uh, if you're looking for a, a change of pace or non-traditional Christmas movie this holiday season, you should check it out. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, Paige liked it as well. Um, that's it for this week's episode of The Awesome Cody. As usual, I am your host, Cody. And tune in next week when I talk about Gremlins, another horror comedy, uh, Christmas, Christmas horror comedy. Uh, and then, f- like I always say at the end of these episodes, let's be awesome. <laughs>